special individual teams. And I know it's weird to ask you this early with so much left to play, but where does what Christian is doing kind of rank and, and what you've been able to see as a, as a coach? Yeah, I, I think um, what he's doing is what some other guys have done before him is they're a part of a really good group. Um, so it makes them better because they've got the guys behind them doing the job and then guys in front of them getting on base. Um, doing it from the leadoff spot is kind of unique. And then, you know, since he's been a freshman too, he's done it, you know, in important situations too. When, when the competitiveness is about as high as it can get or the fire's burning about as hot as you can imagine. So there's a lot of different things you could throw at it and it's a long conversation we could have. And it'll be a really fun one, like you said, kind of when the season is over or when his career is over. And, and then, um, you know, yesterday was a really fun one with Beck hitting the homer and Crochet facing Trey um, and some other guys doing some things in the minor leagues. So um, those will be ongoing conversations for a while that'll be really fun. And I think SEMO will kind of be a centerpiece of those. You guys put each other's thoughts in order here tonight. Kind of what went into changing things up again? Um, you know, just kind of looking at who we were facing has a little bit to do with it, but also um, trying to balance things out. And then, um, you know, looking to, uh, you know, looking to put some people on notice that they need to do a little bit better. Um, and back us with what he did. I mean, I've kind of repeatedly said, all those guys deserve whatever they get. I mean, Brad Key's sitting there, Bargo, um, but we give back us the nod tonight. Didn't go well for him, but um, you know, as long as we get some productivity out of each spot in the lineup, just a quality at bat or two, and you know, Reese kind of picked us up there at the end with his swing that he took. Um, but I, I think it's nice that this group is flexible. Like I've, I've said before, a couple years ago, and then even the year before, you had guys slated in very specific spots, whether it be on the mound or in the lineup. Um, and I don't, I don't know that we'll ever get to that spot where it's just stationary. It might be, uh, you know, from one game to the next, we assess what, what we think is best. You mentioned wanting to kind of send a message to Mustard Jared and see if you guys you feel like those guys respond in the right way. Yeah, I think so. I, I think KT needs to have a good approach at the plate. And uh, he certainly did that tonight. Um, it started in here, is very determined, and then, you know, kind of, followed uh, into his work during BP and then in the game, even, even you know, one of the at-bats that didn't go his way, um, you saw a good approach and, and a right mindset. And I think it's not just him. I mean, it depends on which game it is. There's, this thing goes in cycles and everybody in our lineup has a chance to be the best guy that night. And everybody in the lineup has a chance to, to maybe struggle uh, that night in particular. So when you struggle, you can either get more competitive and more determined or not. And uh, that might just be within the game because um, by number, you, you know, they've got a bunch of other good arms. You know, you, you see a guy that's in a groove and he makes it tough on you. Again, you can either feel defeated or, or pout or whatever it might be or get more determined. There's a couple of very deserving names we'll talk about for SEC Player of the Year, but how important is it that Christian is in that conversation if he is? Yeah, I think he should be. Um, I think if they were giving away an award for running hard down to first, he's probably going to finish, I don't know, 367th or something like that. Um, but, you know, look at what Trey's doing. I think the one thing about Trey that year in particular, and Dylan Cruz is a freak, and I'm not supposed to say it because I work at Tennessee, but I love Sonny Deshera. Um, he falls short of beating those two guys, but look what he's doing now. So um, I think those awards are awesome, and they're an honor, and it's probably something you should be proud of, but it's a marathon, it's a sprint, applies to our game more than anything. So I think what you want is to continue having success and play as long as you can and keep getting better. And Christian Moore has definitely done that. And I could see him continuing to do that when his time is done with us. But, you know, it's, it's nice for the program. Like I said, other guys are making him better. And then there's days too where he goes out, you know, and does it and, and makes it easier on other guys. What's his best positive job tonight? Good. Um, he never really kind of got in like a flow or a rhythm like he tends to do at times. But he also, if you flip it, he never got into that situation where at times, maybe here and there, where a couple things snow, you know, um, snow plow. That is not. You like the Simpsons, Mr. Plow? Remember that episode? Um, Dylan didn't snowball on him. Thank you. Um, you know, with maybe we don't make a play, and then he, you know, struggle with flair and whatever it might be. Um, so overall, it was, you know, an outing where he kept everything together for us, and it certainly makes our dugout feel good when he's out there. And, and I think kind of tampered down. Um, you know, their offense in a way that it made our, off, our offense a little bit better. So good outing and I think, you know, another win for him and be exciting for him to go back home to his home state and pitch in some capacity next week.
Yeah, I mean, if you want to have a meeting with them tomorrow, I think it, to stress it would be outstanding. And that goes for everybody. And um, that's nice about this group is, um, and, and we've had it in the, in the past where guys are flexible and everybody wants the ball in whatever situation it might be. And I think it's going to be important for guys to realize they might be hot in the bullpen and get passed over. And they may be asked to do something that's not in the norm for them. Um, but the good thing in his case is he's kind of done it you know, three different ways for us. And I think he should expect all those to be possibilities for us because it's, it's, you know, our tournament is in March, but March Madness is called that for a reason. It's chaos. And uh, chaos will begin for every team in the country, not just ours, whenever the postseason rolls around. How impressive is Christian Moore's sustained success knowing how much he probably was on the pitcher's radar right now? Yeah, I, I think that's a big thing for pitchers and hitters is there's so much information and people scheme and game plan for you and things like that. And uh, you, you've got to be willing to counter adjust. Um, I don't want to say like a counter move because it's not chess we're playing here, um, but you got to be able to cover your blind spots. And I don't think you can do that in one day or one sit down or one video session. Uh, I think that is kind of back to my answer is, you know, you want to win awards, you want to win games, you want to get recognized, you want to get honored, you want the results to go your way. But if you just kind of tunnel it down to what you have control over and what you need to do every day for those things to happen, is just keep evolving. And uh, it's been interesting to watch him and Blake Burke and KT especially just evolve and become more complete players. And Dylan Dryling certainly belongs in that category too. How important was it for Stamos to bounce back and get through that second inning pretty easily? Yeah, it was good. If anything, the way he threw in the second inning makes it more frustrating probably for him and more difficult for us to make the switch. We'd kind of talked and, you know, that's kind of what we felt to do. But, you know, one pitch, I mean, he gets to a two strike count there and, and you know, I don't know, a few pitches early in the first inning just didn't look like his normal conviction. And that might just be because they put one run on the board, taking the easy way out and saying, well, that result happened because of this. But that's just kind of the way it looked to me. Um, but you make one, you know, poor mistake to a Team USA guy and he makes you pay for it. But overall, he did exactly what we needed him to do for us. And then, um, you know, Cause certainly took the baton and did well with it, as did Kirby. How big was the Hunter Kinsley to not with Alana Stamps get three walks and particularly that third inning sequence with him and Drowling leading the series? Yeah, it was huge. But um, for, for tonight's game, the more exciting thing for me is, I guess, to stick with this theme of getting better and evolving is Hunter's an aggressive guy. I mean, he'll run into the wall for you. He runs the bases aggressive. He's got an aggressive mentality and he wants to swing the bat which is awesome, but as we've said, it takes two to tango. So just to swing to swing will get you in a hot mess in this league. So the fact he can add that to his repertoire, and we were joking when I talked in here, a couple guys don't have that hit by pitch repertoire to them uh, like I did, but I couldn't hit. So it's, it's a tough one to coach, but everybody needs to be willing to, to just take their walk if the guy's either trying to get him to chase or the guy's command is lacking. And uh, he set the table for us in a big way and the numbers weren't big, um, you know, we faced good. He, he had their best numbers out of everybody, and, and you can see why it's a real difficult mix. And it's not like in the first two or three innings we put up six runs, but what we did do was make it very difficult on him and drove that pitch count up. And, again, a part of it was Ensley. So he was – that's a nice little spot. You know, we mentioned Trey Lipscomb. That's a nice little juicy spot in the five hole in the lineup for everybody, and he took advantage of it. You mentioned Cosby not really getting into a rhythm. How beneficial is it for you to see that if he – Yeah, but and I, and I think to be honest with you, I think we have had that confidence for a while now. Kentucky, we bring him in so quickly. Um, you know, again, if yeah, we don't mind him starting against anybody, but if we're going to bring him in in the middle of a game, we really don't mind what situation it is. And again, the, the Kentucky one is easy to reference because it was a, a hot mess we brought him into. And we, you know, it was just kind of a gut feel. We go real quick change, and he's got the composure that you're looking for. Um, and Kirby's still in the ninth inning because he's got the composure, and Combs has been thrown in a bunch of jams because of that. So we've got some guys we really trust. And then the fun thing is there's some guys like Loy and Phillips, and I, you know, I may leave somebody out that you know, have, are kind of climbing that ladder a little bit too, and we're going to need all of them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all.